Hi, and thank you for joining the Real-Time Occupancy Management Imperative. I'm Bart Waldeck, CMO and SVP of Product Strategy at Tango, the leading provider of next-generation IWMS software and analytics. In April 2020, Cornet Global conducted an updated survey of its 11,000 members to gauge the evolving corporate real estate response to the COVID-19 coronavirus challenge and to identify practical steps members can take to support their company's efforts to ensure employee safety and business continuity. The stats you see on the screen here are from that study. Over the last 12 months, there have been dozens of surveys with conflicting results as to what employees want from the workplace once they return to the office. But there are some things we do know. Employees want flexibility in how, where, and when they work, and they want to feel safe and connected to their company and their coworkers. The good news is we have three vaccines in the market today. And finally, discussions about the return to the office are no longer premature. And when we do go back, things will clearly be different. As this article in the Wall Street Journal points out, this goes beyond making employees feel safer with updated ventilation and enforced social distancing. It's more about how teams will use these spaces when some remain home, others split their time, and still more can't wait to resume a daily commute and up-close collaboration. Cue the dynamic workplace, a pivot away from the open plan, built in the idea that with fewer employees coming to their work on any given day, offices can offer them more flexibility of layout and management. Besides being the most overused word of 2020 and likely 2021, what does the dynamic workplace really mean? The answer is it depends. It depends on what industry you're in, it depends on what company you work for, what type of culture you have, and your role. So don't listen to the truth sayers who are telling you what it will look like, because they don't know either. As I said, it depends. Some companies are further down the path of understanding their office of the future, such as Salesforce.com. The president and chief people officer recently made waves when he declared the nine to five workday dead in the company's blog. He went on to say that Salesforce will be redesigning their workspaces over time as community hubs to accommodate a more hybrid work style. He said, gone are the days of a sea of desks. We'll create more collaboration and breakout spaces to foster human connection that can't be replicated remotely. And that last part is actually the key. People now need a reason to come into the office, something that they can't get at home just like the movie theater, the restaurant, or the grocery store. Prior to the pandemic, many companies took down barriers between workspaces and crammed in as many desks as possible, hence the term the open floor plan. But we can no longer design that way, it's not viable. As we now know from this example, which is the 11th floor of a call center in Seoul, South Korea. According to Bloomberg City Lab, On February 25th, 2020, one of the 216 people who worked on the floor started to experience symptoms of coronavirus. The government quickly shut down the building, but not in time, as 43% of the workers on the floor became infected. The red color spaces represent the infected, most of which were seated at long tables that accompanied 12 different workers. Clearly, this type of design is not viable going forward. Moving from where we are today to a new dynamic office will not happen overnight, and it shouldn't for all the reasons I mentioned. Sure, layouts can be adjusted if we're going to return to the office safely. They must. But real estate is a long game, and it would be premature and likely costly to perform major remodels or downsizing your portfolio until you clearly understand how work within your company has changed. Regardless of the process each company goes through to transition to their own version of the dynamic workplace, it should include these key elements. First, companies need to understand at a much deeper level than before the various roles within their company and the specific individuals who occupy them. This will allow space planners to develop personas and determine space needs by individual and department. Second, and most companies have already done this, you need to reconfigure your current floor plan to enable the safe return to the office. Pretty obvious. Third, and arguably most important, is learning what the dynamic workplace means for your company. How are people working differently? How frequently are they coming in? For how long? 
and to do what type of work. This part requires new solutions to accomplish. Solutions that will be needed on an ongoing basis in order to manage the workplace of the future. And I'll talk a little bit more about that soon. And finally, companies need to analyze the data and conduct what if analysis at the floor, building and portfolio level in order to craft long-term real estate strategy that deliver cost savings, targeted occupancy and high utilization. Let's dig into a few of the less obvious elements. Determining the future necessarily starts with the most important asset any company has, its people. Workers are not homogeneous. They've got different jobs, different needs, and different life situations, the latter of which is typically ignored. What you're seeing here is an example of a persona mapping methodology one of Tango's partners uses. The vertical axis is the continuum of working as an individual versus as a team, and the horizontal axis represents how static an individual's work is versus on the go or mobile in nature. In this example, we have four persona types that emerged, the collaborator, the wanderer, the sentry, and the rover, each with a different need and working pattern and targeted time in the office. Frameworks like this help unpack the need of a specific role, but companies must go deeper to the individual level in order to fully understand how and where work will likely occur. Things like age, health, having an environment at home that's conducive to remote work, as well as a person's desire to connect with others will all come into play. After understanding the role and the individual, workers tend to fall into one of three groups. You have office-based workers who will come into the office four to five days a week, typically. You have flex workers who will visit the office one to three days a week, usually for team collaboration or customer meetings or presentations. And finally, remote workers who do not live near an office or have roles or personal situations that limit their need or ability to come into an office. Now we can begin to look at the types of spaces that different workers want, depending on their classification. Office-based workers need dedicated space to come in four to five days a week. In situations where there are rotating workers in an office, for example, there's a need for shift space. Next, depending on the day and the need, flex workers will require reservable hotel space. Or if they're working with their department or a group of people, they may want to reserve some neighborhood space. Obviously, there are other important spaces like conference rooms, collaboration space, and training areas, all of which will need to be reservable. As I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, the Office of the Future is more about how teams will use space when some remain home, Others split their time and still more can't wait to resume, the, resume their daily commute and up close collaboration. The dynamic workplace will be a pivot away from the open floor plan. Built on the idea that fewer employees coming to work on any given day will enable offices to offer them more flexibility of layout and management. But therein lies the challenge. Sure, we can categorize workers. We can estimate how frequently they need or want to be in the office and what types of space they may want. But at the end of the day, the need for space varies by day and quite frankly, by day part as individuals, departments, and companies make decisions about coming into the office or not. So in reality, the dynamic workplace is a real-time optimization puzzle between a variable demand for space and a fixed supply. Finding a daily equilibrium that meets employee needs and drives utilization is the new imperative. And we all know that legacy processes and tools and technology can't get us there. In essence, we are moving towards a hospitality model that requires real-time processes and technology. That is the imperative. A solution that engages daily, even hourly with employees. One that has the capability through artificial intelligence to learn how, where, and when work is being done. One that has the ability to optimize dedicated and flex space in real time based on dynamic demand. One that can utilize predictive analytics to recommend space based on historical usage patterns, employee schedules, and departmental and company activities. The result of which is a real time view of occupancy and utilization management, an improved employee and space productivity, reduced occupancy cost, 
and better informed real estate strategy. It might sound futuristic to many of you, but that is the challenge ahead. The good news is these tools exist and now is the time to embrace them.